Hello you guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you happen to be coming on from seeing this video title. My name is Lindsay. Today I'm doing a video that I've been uh, kind of putting off for quite some time now. I talked about it months ago that I was going to probably film this video if you guys wanted to see it and I got a lot of positive feedback asking for it and it's taken me quite some time so thank you guys so much for your patience with me. My goal with this video is to reach people that may need it because when I was in a place in my toxic relationship that I didn't know who to reach out to, I wasn't even really telling people a lot of the details and at one point I went on YouTube and I searched how to leave a toxic relationship and if anyone finds this video by doing something similar to that then it is all worth it to me to help anyone that may be watching so if you resonate with this video or you appreciate hearing what i'm going to share um or you just like this video and found it helpful or interesting it would mean so much to me if you would give it a thumbs up if you're not part of my channel it would mean the absolute world if you subscribed if you resonate with this video um leave me a comment down below i would love to hear from you guys this is obviously something that's really personal for me to open up about but i do want to make a couple almost like disclaimer type just top of the video type of things before i get real deep into all the shit <sighs> okay first thing i want to say is a huge 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 number one reason that I have been putting off this video for so long is because of course you know this relationship didn't only involve me it involved another person and for a really long time I have felt that it's not right for me to speak on anything that I you know like anything that didn't come from my personal experience right so I want to make it really clear at the beginning of this video that I'm only going to speak from my personal experiences, how I felt, my feelings, things that I want to share that I went through in a toxic relationship, and that is all from my point of view. Out of respect for that person, I'm going to do my absolute best in this video to only speak from my feelings and personal experiences, as I feel like that's the best way to share my story. My heart is freaking racing, and I took some CBD oil before this video, and I'm like still fucking anxiety level 100 right now. Uh, because I wanted to open up about this for so long. For some background info, this was my first long relationship. This was the first relationship I had ever been in that lasted longer than six months. So I pretty much consider it my first big adult relationship. Not necessarily my first boyfriend, but my first relationship, right? That was like multiple years long. This was a two and a half, three year almost long relationship for me. I don't exactly know the point in my relationship where I started to question if it was healthy or not. Um, there's not necessarily one day or fight or something that completely sticks out. But I would say that we had pretty explosive fights almost from the beginning, from maybe six months in, something like that. And I don't know if that's normal, but I didn't really know what was normal and wasn't normal since, like I said, this was one of my first real relationships and definitely my first relationship that I experienced fighting in the sense of like big, uh, detrimental, explosive fights that would leave me and you know i'm assuming the other person feeling extremely low how i would describe a toxic relationship in my eyes i mean other people might view it differently but basically just this feeling that your relationship is on a roller coaster and it truly does feel like the highs are so high and the lows are incredibly incredibly low but it actually feels like you can't get off the ride the roller coaster and i know that a lot of people use that as kind of a what's the word like a metaphor but that is truly how i would explain it in like one to two sentences i also want to be really open and honest with you guys because i feel like i do not want a video like this to come across as oh i'm 100 percent the victim in this situation this is something that happened to me feel bad for me that's why i'm making this video so i do want to be completely transparent with you guys and say that i was absolutely not perfect in this relationship i had a lot of things that came out of me that i never saw before come out in this relationship i think that this relationship brought out the worst in a lot of sides of me as well as the other person but i definitely want to acknowledge that i contributed to the toxicity of my relationship and that i definitely 
can look back over a year later and take accountability for a lot of things that I did to fuel the toxic cycle of this relationship for so long. I think the main thing that I go back and forth about is how did I not leave sooner? Why did I feel like I couldn't leave sooner? And how did it take me so, so many months years even of going through the same kind of cycle with this person to actually finally leave. One of the main things I think I did wrong in this relationship, especially at the beginning, was that my boundaries weren't laid out from the beginning and I actually didn't really know the importance or even how to set boundaries in a romantic relationship. And having boundaries, if you do need to put them in place into a romantic relationship, is extremely important. And if they can't be respected, it's just kind of a mess. From the beginning and i think for me you guys know i'm a pretty independent person i've lived alone for five and a half years or something like that um i think for me a big thing for me that was never respected in this relationship was my need for personal space having my own house having my own space especially when um there would be conflict and that not being respected for me to have some space to cool off calm down things like that that goes back to you know how people handle conflict and how people are when things are not good and the way people fight can be very very different so i'll kind of get into that a little bit more but i would say overall i think that was one of the downfalls of this relationship for me was not having boundaries clearly set from the beginning on really either side and not having those boundaries respected when they were laid out if you're in a new relationship or you're in a relationship that think things are coming up like that do not forget the importance of clearly stating your boundaries even if you have to write them down and post it on the wall even if you have to tell your person every single day hey it's not okay with me if you bring up this or you touch me there or boundaries can look a million different ways hey um it's really helpful for me if you don't do this or you do do this when i'm feeling like this these are all examples of what boundaries can look like i think another downfall of my relationship which i know a lot of people can relate to was the presence of alcohol in my relationship and how alcohol and going out together correlated with our biggest worst fights of the entire relationship now this is something that i started to realize and it took me quite a while to realize that that was the common denominator in huge explosive fights some of the worst nights of my life nights where i would lock myself in my room crying for hours and once again i was a willing participant in drinking alcohol in my relationship and that's not something i can put all on one person so i'm absolutely not trying to play the blame game here in any of this video and looking back it's actually a lot easier to pick up on certain things that I just shouldn't have continued to do such as go out with my partner when I knew that we were probably going to get into a fight, you know, go out and drink liquor and go out on the town. When every other time we had gone out and drank hard alcohol together, we pretty much had ended up in a fight, um, gone home mad at each other, gone home in separate rides, etc, etc. And these are things that I started to slowly, slowly pick up on. but. It took me quite a while another thing that was interesting in this particular relationship for me was every time we traveled together we got into a huge fight and i don't exactly know why that was but we were horrible at traveling together going along with like going out and alcohol traveling together for some reason was one of the absolute biggest triggers and things that would make us fight insanely whenever we traveled together yet we continued to travel together knowing that they were a bad idea but still agreeing to go and do them still taking trips still going out to concerts and whatever whatever this was pre-covid times now i haven't been super specific yet of some of the things in this video that i personally did and experienced that i believe uh showed me that this relationship was toxic so i'm not one to i think a lot of people want to throw that word around right i probably should have said this earlier on in the video but i think it's really easy to call a relationship toxic or call a person toxic or call a friendship toxic something like that. it's really easy from the outside to be like oh that's toxic you know and it's kind of crazy because when i was actually in this relationship for so long 
I didn't even want to say or admit or um, even believe the idea that it could be a toxic relationship for so long and I would question it in my head for months and months and months on end breaking up and getting back together breaking up and getting back together which I'll get into still not knowing if I was in a toxic relationship and I think sometimes it's actually hard to know especially when it first starts happening because of course fighting is a normal part of a relationship and most couples fight but I think some of the things I'm going to point out to you guys now things that I experienced and I did uh, will maybe help you guys realize if you're doing some of these similar things or you have experienced some of these things I guess it's like what does that word mean to you and I think deep down you you know if you're in a healthy or an unhealthy relationship. You don't even have to use the word toxic if you don't want to, but I think uh, asking yourself, is this love healthy or is it unhealthy? And I definitely knew that this was not a healthy love, yet I let it continue for so, so, so long. So one of the biggest things I did in this relationship was I hid so many things for my friends and family after the first time we broke up and got into a big fight i probably told a couple people maybe my sister maybe one of my friends and then we got back together and after one or two times of getting in a fight telling my friends or family about it and then getting back together i started to not tell anyone i wouldn't tell a single soul i wouldn't tell my sister my mom my best friend i wouldn't tell anyone and i would hide all of the fights and i just didn't want to be the girl who cried wolf because deep down I knew that I was probably going to go back. And if anyone can relate to that, that's a really real thing that you do um, a lot of times in relationships that you're addicted to going back to the person. You know you're going to go back and you don't tell anyone about it and you think about it. <laughs> I knew I was going to cry in this video. It was uh, bound to happen, but um, that's one of the main things I started doing. I wouldn't tell anyone when we would break up or we would go on a break or we would have a huge fight. Pretty much like I said, after the first fight or two, I hid it from everybody. Another thing I did was sugarcoat our relationship. So I've archived um, most of my photos from this time just because, you know, when you're not in a relationship with somebody anymore, I think it's normal to either delete or archive the posts. Of course, some people will keep them up. And for me, I didn't want to fully delete them. I just went ahead and archived them. But um, there's multiple photos I can think of in my brain right now that I posted that we were kissing or holding each other's hands or out traveling, doing something together. And literally an hour before that picture, the night before, a few hours before, we had one of the worst fights of our entire relationship. And then the next day, everything was fine for not to say that i faked my relationship for instagram at all um but it's more like i said just the sugar coating of everything and the cycle of like having a really bad night and then the next day starting over almost blacking it out and that's something that i absolutely did all the time I mentioned this a little bit before but people's um fighting styles or even just a better way of putting it is the way that you handle conflict can be extremely different and you'll start to figure those things out in a serious relationship especially if fighting is happening often and our fighting styles or the ways that we handle conflict were pretty much polar opposites which is something that you may or may not experience in a relationship um, and I am the type or was the type at least in this relationship when we fought to um, run away to lock myself in rooms lock myself in the bathroom uh, even if we were out run away go outside go to the bathroom escape basically so I didn't have to get into a fight with my partner because I knew, you know, when that was going to happen or when it had begun to happen. And my tactic was escape or a lot of the time I just needed five or ten minutes to calm down because I don't like saying things in the heat of the moment when you get angry and you get upset i don't like saying things that i'm going to regret in the heat of the moment so some of the things that i would do like i said lock myself in the bathroom run down the stairs in my house and lock the bathroom door in fights and not really ever be able to actually be alone during those moments that i needed to be alone because that was not how 
the other person was able to work through things and we just never really found a common ground in that area and I think once again that was one of the biggest biggest issues. Another thing I did towards the end of the relationship which of course at this time I didn't really know it was the end of my relationship but towards the last couple months um, something that I did which I don't feel like this is normal but I started to take photos of myself when I was crying on the bathroom floor at a personal low. I have a couple photos that I don't know if this is weird to put in the video. I'm gonna put them in because I saw these last night. I never deleted them. I went back and I found them last night. And the pain in my eyes in these photos, the pain in my face is so symbolic of how I felt at the lowest lows of this entire relationship. And the thing that makes me so sad when I look at these photos to this day is when I took those, I took them to remind myself you have to get out because this is how you're willingly making yourself feel by staying in this relationship. You can't put the blame on somebody else that many times when you're willingly, willingly letting yourself be in this relationship when you have every chance and every opportunity to leave if you really, really wanted to. And that's the saddest part about these photos for me is that I felt like I couldn't leave. And that was a reminder to myself to look back on those. It's one of those things that like now I can be like, holy shit, I got out like I did it. I was never trapped in this relationship. I always could have left. I always could have left. And some people, they don't have that. Some people are in scary, abusive relationships where they feel like they cannot leave. And I always had the ability to leave. And these photos are just really symbolic of feeling like I couldn't when in every reality I actually could. <laughs> like I said, towards the end, I finally started taking pictures, which is not something that's normal to do when you're lying on the bathroom floor crying. But I'm actually really glad that I have some photos from me at my lowest low. Another thing that I would do was when we would fight, I would record it on my phone and not like a video video, but just the audio of us going back and forth. It's a sad thing that I would do it in the moment because I knew that the next day I would remember the way we talked to each other. I would remember how upset we made each other. I would remember how we would go back and forth for hours. But it was almost me in the moment telling my future self, listen to this, like remember what this feels like so that you'll stop doing it. Um, I didn't stop for so long. And that's okay, I don't have many regrets in life. I think overall, I haven't really made this clear in this video yet, but overall, I learned so incredibly much from this relationship. Once again, I had every ability and out to leave the relationship if I wanted to, um, as did they. And it's just this whole kind of symbolic cycle of a toxic relationship that keeps you holding on and feeling like you can't leave. Another thing that I did was, sounds a little weird to say, but this is the best way I can describe it, is blacking out my emotions and the, the lows in our fights. And I started doing that like, you know, we would have a night, for example, that we went out and maybe we came back home and we, we fought for a couple hours or something and it was like, you're a really bad fight. And then the next day, it was almost like I just would, phew, try to black it out and not remember that it happened. Start over, just, it's a new day. Just let's start fresh today. Let's see if we're gonna fight today. Let's see if today will be better. And really towards the last few months of the relationship, I was finding myself, I wasn't even in touch with my emotions at all. It was so up and down, high and low all the time. I didn't know like what was normal to feel and I would wake up the next day, like I said, after one of those nights crying on the bathroom floor, feeling lower than I've ever felt before. And I would just start my day and I would just act like everything was normal because it felt like everything was normal because I started to believe that this every single day for years was just normal and how it was. When I tell you guys that 
I saw a side of myself in this relationship that I didn't even know was there. I've never even seen her since. Um, the way I would get so built up and so angry and so, I guess, just pushed to the edge. Stuff in me building up, basically, and blowing up. I never thought that I was that person, an angry person. And the way I would get sometimes in some of our fights, I don't even recognize that person. I Like I said, I haven't seen her since. I hope to never see her again because that is something that I didn't even know. I didn't even know that that was a, a part of me that could come out when I'm upset. So I've been talking about stuff for a while. So I'm going to kind of segue into when do you hit your breaking point and what what was my final breaking point? You would think listening to all this shit that, you know, maybe I'd realize I think we need a breakup for good. And when I tell you that I had that realization time after time after time after time again in this relationship and we would break up for a day or a week or go on a break for a week and then we get back together and we would never actually break up. If any of you guys can relate to going through a whole huge fight, saying you're gonna break up, this is it, this is it. And then the next day get back together, whatever, just the whole cycle. That's the only way to, that's the only way to word it is a toxic cycle of going back and breaking up and fighting. The amount of times that I told myself and I documented saying never again, Lindsay. The amount of times I wrote in my notes tab on my phone. The amount of times I took videos of myself. I have a video of myself from like 2018 sitting in my bed after probably the worst fight we had ever, in my experience we had ever had in our relationship thus far. Um, the lock had been broken on my front door because I locked him out. After we had gone out together one night, like out downtown to the bars, gotten drunk, gotten into a huge fight, come home. I was so angry. I locked him out of my house because I didn't want him to come in my house and stay over. I, I just didn't want to have a fight. And I lived alone. Like I said, he didn't live there. I was renting this house and the front door, the lock and part of the wooden front door completely cracked and it was never fixed. It was just like that until I moved out. Obviously never got my security deposit back. And during that whole night, I took a video of myself talking to my camera in my bed, crying, saying never again, never again. Once again, documenting how I felt at one of the lowest points. I continued the relationship for another year after that. Just to show you how, even as I feel like I'm a pretty strong person, independent, never been a person that needed to be in a relationship. So now I'm going to get into the breaking point, my personal breaking point, which is how I left the relationship for good. I could sit here and tell you guys, if you're listening right now and you're in a situation like this, I could sit here and tell you, just leave just end the relationship just break up it is you are going to be so much better off and i do believe that if you're in something like this with somebody but genuinely hearing that from another person doesn't make you do it uh something has to happen to make you actually hit your breaking point and this is what happened for me so we went out to a concert we drank um we got into a fight started fighting. The concert was not that fun because we were in a fight the whole time. <laughs> Pretty symbolic of a lot of this relationship going out and trying to do things that were fun and then just getting into a huge fight. That's when you know you shouldn't be keep keep going, right? Like looking back, it's like Lindsay. So the night is ending. We're going back to a friend's house, but we are not together. We had separated after the concert they were with some people, I was with some people, but we end up back at the same place where we started the night. Like I said, we had been fighting and a lot of the things that I did when we would fight was hide and go off, run away, escape, things like that. So just escape the fighting basically, trying to be alone or avoid a fight. So I went to the bathroom and then I 
it was weird i don't i've never done this before but i went to the bathroom and i came out and there was other people in the living room and he was there i hadn't talked to him in a little bit since we like left the concert separately or whatever this sounds weird but in my mind it felt like one of the only options besides get into a huge fight with him in front of everybody right now there was like probably five six seven other people there like i said pre-covid times just just to clarify this was a long time ago um after i left the bathroom i went and i sat in this little room like a laundry room that was by the bathroom and i could hear everybody talking in the living room he was somewhere outside or something like that because you know you can hear other people talking about you it was like one of those things and i heard one of his best friends say their relationship is so fucked up. I heard that one sentence and I started crying. I was, like I said, I'm sitting in this laundry room alone. Nobody knew that I was there. People thought that I was like in the bathroom or something. And I just hid there for a little while. I know it sounds weird, but I just hid there because I wanted him to leave i wanted him to realize that i wasn't there he couldn't find me to fight with me so after that i did go home and i don't know what it was about this night but something stuck with me that night almost this realization that i thought that i was almost keeping it on the down low our problems and our fighting and how extreme it was but the fact that some of those people we didn't even hang out with often at all they knew how fucked up our relationship was and it was just almost something about that realization and just being like you can't hide this from everybody like everybody like people know like everybody knows and it wasn't that it was this like embarrassing thing like oh they have relationship problems something about this night just was my breaking point um so i went home i went to sleep he wasn't there we met up the next day he didn't remember really what had happened. I remember him being like, I don't really remember like other than these are some of the things I remember like piecing together the night. And I didn't even feel like being like, well, this is what happened. You know what I mean? I was like, I'm gonna keep this one to myself. I know how I felt. I know what happened for me last night. And that exact same day, the day after that fight, I called my mom, I called my sister. And I called my best friend and I broke down crying. I'm pretty sure to all of them on the phone. I called them separately and I told them all, I need to break up with this person. I need to end this relationship for me, for them, for, <laughs> I fully believe it was for the better of that person as well as myself at the time. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because I made the three closest people to me in my life hold me accountable. I had accountability partners. I told all of them, I need you to hold me accountable because I have to end this relationship. It was much more dramatic than that. I was, I was sobbing on the phone specifically with my mom and I just asked them all like, how am I gonna do this? What should I do? Like, I need to end this for good. And that was so helpful for me looking back because that was one of the first times I actually told people how I was feeling and they could feel it through the phone. And my mom never stopped every day for weeks after that until I went home after my breakup. My mom texted me like, how are you doing? Like, she checked in with me every single day. She held me accountable because I was able to tell her how i felt and my sister and my best friend were there for me so much too and i know i'm like fucking losing my shit again but that was so helpful for me to have people that knew and people hold me accountable for ending it because if i had just ended it and not told anyone I'm the only person that's going to hold myself accountable and I had to tell other people to be able to actually do it. What I did that same day after I talked to them all on the phone was I wrote a letter and I sounds weird but I don't think I ever actually gave it to the person. I wrote him a letter and I got out my emotions. I just typed, I didn't even like physically write it. I typed and I got out how I was feeling, my sadness, my emotions, my anger. I just got it out on paper and it felt so fucking good and I don't even think I ever ended up actually giving it to him and I ended things with him that same night um I broke things off and I I don't think at that point you know he thought it was for real for real because like I said we'd broken up so many times 
Um, and then what I did that was actually different that I had never really done before any of the times we had broken up I put on some music and I went through my entire house We were not living together, but there was so much of this stuff in my house You know when you're in a relationship your lives kind of intertwine. So there was a lot of the things in my house I went through my entire house with boxes and I put every single thing. I didn't leave one thing like I went through every drawer. I looked in everything to make sure there was not gonna be a sign of him because to actually end a relationship, you need to not be reminded so much every time you open a drawer or whatever of that person. I didn't leave one sock. I put everything in boxes, loaded up my car and dropped it all off at his house. And that was one thing I had never ever ever done before along with having my accountability partners um putting the stuff in boxes and dropping it off at his house what like getting it out of my house was one of the most helpful things to do too for me get rid of everything you have to do that sorry guys i've been adjusting my lighting a little bit throughout this video that was the breakup uh, i do want to say that we were still in a bit of communication after that it was not for me. I didn't do a clean cut. I didn't ever go back to that person in the sense of we never got back together. I think I knew, I knew it was over, but there definitely was still a little bit, bit of communication in that like adjusting healing period. And I say that just because I think a lot of the times people expect a breakup, it is just going to be this clean cut. And honestly, like looking back, I, I wish it had been a clean cut because I think it would have been easier and just quicker to heal. Um, but it's in the moment when you're actually going through that, it is very, very difficult a lot of the times if there hasn't been one huge betrayal or one huge thing that set one person off. It can be really hard to just have it a clean cut and not have any communication. So I just don't want to sit here and be like, I'm perfect. After that, we never talked again and that was it and I healed. No, there was going back and forth. We saw each other after that. We hung out a few times. We tried to be friends. We didn't succeed at being friends. We tried to be friends again. So I just say that to be like, it's not always so fucking easy to just end it. It was not easy. Um, even though it was my choice, you know, like I was the person that ended this relationship. So it probably was easier for me in a lot of ways than it was for that person because I'm the one that ended it for good. But that doesn't mean it's easy. Just because you're the one doing the breaking up, it doesn't mean it's easy. So if I could say a couple things to just end off this video, I would say that I know how it feels to be in that cycle. I know exactly how it feels to feel like you know you deserve better and probably the other person does too. You can even feel they deserve better. You both deserve better than this but that you can't get out. It just feels like you can't get off the ride, like I said. And it sounds so crazy if you've never experienced this because you're like, you can look at all your friends or anyone going through something like this and be like, just get out. Like, you don't deserve this. You deserve better. The amount of times my sister told me that, the amount of times, you know, she was really the one that told me that. Um, and like I said, I didn't even tell her everything. I didn't even tell her about a lot of the fights because I wouldn't tell anyone. I would hide everything, everything away. But I would just say be easy on yourself. Be kind to yourself. If you're ending a relationship like this, or if you want to, at any period that you're at, if you have ended one, if you're going through a breakup right now, even if it wasn't a toxic relationship, like be kind to yourself, be easy on yourself because you are healing and healing takes time and you're not gonna adjust overnight to not being with this person anymore. I know and I accept now this relationship was not, you know, the one for me, but it taught me so incredibly much. I am nervous to upload this video because Mostly just because of my ex and like I said, that's why I wanted to just make everything so clear at the beginning But I just know I just know him and There's never a right way for me to talk about our relationship Which sucks because sometimes I wish that he just never watched my YouTube channel again But that would be too easy, right? The last thing I want to say is if you are in a relationship or a situation where you are getting hurt whether it is physically or emotionally document those things every chance you get pictures video whatever you can do document it 
even if you don't think you're gonna wanna look back at it, even if you don't think you're gonna need it, because sometimes you need those things as proof. Sometimes you need those things to be able to get out. Sometimes, like me, you even just need those things to see yourself how low and how sad you were in a moment like that. Well, my camera battery is blinking red, so I'm gonna try to finish it off so I don't run out of camera battery right here. I've been recording for so long, but if you made it until the end of this video, thank you for watching. This truly was something that I wanted to make for so incredibly long and it felt really good to do so. Thank you to any of you guys who were there for me through my breakup. Pretty much all of you guys were there for me and I love you guys. I hope that this made you feel less alone. I hope that maybe it gave an understanding to you about these types of relationships if you've never experienced one. Definitely a huge learning experience in my life. Thank you guys so much for listening. I truly love you and I will see you in a happier video very soon. Bye you guys.